Wilson? Wilson! Wilson! All right, so today is August 1st, 2018. Found this great camping spot right outside of Telluride, Colorado. Well, like 20 miles outside of Telluride. Uh, past Lizard Head, past. I'm gonna make an attempt on Mount Wilson today. Um, then found this great camping spot. It's really nice. Uh, and the trees here. Beautiful morning, should be a nice day. Uh, but yeah, just getting up altitude, probably camping around 10, over 10,000 feet. Um, what's it like 3,000 meters about and uh, it's breakfast time this fire pit is way too big out of control got the water boiling Luckily we have, I have one Starbucks Via Pack left, instant coffee, because I found out that this nice high quality pack of instant coffee I bought is decaf, a travesty, decaf, I didn't see that, that's, that's key, I can't stand decaf coffee, I need the caffeine, I need my caffeine. We'll have to get more. This was expensive. That's how we roll. And of course, peanut butter for my peanut butter bread. All right, breakfast set up here. Dave's killer bread. Get some peanut butter on it. I got my spork. They call these spoon fork, spork, sporkish. Reusable. I've been cleaning this out. I ate dinner in it last night. It's a nice little bowl. And of course, only one via pack for my coffee. Precious non-decaf, regular, regular coffee. I, need, I usually like to have two in this big thing, but this is also reusable, uh, keeps my coffee hot how I like it. Sandy even got my favorite jelly jam. Where is it? My favorite, favorite jelly jam that Sandy got me. Peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. Ah. Oh. Bon appétit. Coffee's the lifeblood, huh? Got a little friend. Hi. Hey, buddy. Just hopping around. You want some peanut butter jelly sandwich? Not good for them. All right, quick gear layout here. Uh, Hoka One One Speed Goat 2. Drymax Sage Runner Sock, check them out, Sage Runner, Drymax Sock. Uh, we're gonna go with the Nathan Vapor Car. It's got bigger capacity, so I could carry this extra water bottle from Nathan, as well as a soft flask, so more water. Uh, spring Energy, can of berries, uh, calorie electro ride also mix in there. Oh, some toilet paper, just in case. We had a really late dinner last night, it was a long drive. Uh, squirrels Nut Butter, s and uh, Don't wanna chafe downstairs. That would be uncomfortable. Sunto Ambit Peak 3 Sport. I found with the GPS map on it. We have done this uh, route up Mount Wilson. We've gone most of the way up Mount Wilson on this route, the Kilpacker approach. Uh, should be pretty moderate, no class three scrambling or anything above that. So 
hopefully the weather window holds it should be good uh, i also have a jacket and a warm layer on uh for the mountain because uh, you never know what you're going to get up there and yeah we've been up to about 13,000 feet i'll put that in meters on this mountain uh, i think it's the one that's on the coors beer label so uh try to get some media as we go up but uh yeah let's go to the trailhead all right at the trailhead lizard head wilderness area uh you can check check out sandy's vlog about the town and the telly ride and this whole trail access i mainly just wanted to capture our journey up the peak today as well as put it in the context of my pikes peak marathon training but beautiful day out here uh, i think we're gonna get rolling on the trail here there you go so i think we're going up there up in them mountains up in them mountains beautiful country beautiful Beautiful flowers. Oh, we're probably up over 12,000, over 12,000 feet. Still have some climbing to go. About four miles in, 6.4 kilometers. Look at this waterfall. I'm sure, if you could see it with the GoPro. Beautiful day out here. Like I said, uh, these adventure runs are in the San Juan Mountains. Beautiful, most beautiful mountain range in Colorado, and uh, enjoying it. At the same time, though, context of training. I am a serious professional athlete, despite my goofy musical intros and uh, skits like that, but I train to be competitive in the most competitive mountain ultra trail races. That's right now at that stage of my career, that's how I get paid and that's how I get my kicks. I actually truly find a sense of flow, which you could say is a sense of happiness. It's usually very painful. But I find a sense of flow a lot of times in races when I'm absolutely pushing myself 100% against fast runners and trying to get the best out of myself. And in the back of my mind, in any mountain ultra trail race, at least I think I have a chance to win. And I'm gonna train and try to win Pikes Peak. Uh, you know, it's stiff competition. Sometimes I don't even come close to winning. But in mountain ultra trail running, you know, that's my profession. I train with a very structured training program. If we have fun and goof around in the mountains and tag, tag 14ers and enjoy it. I love that about the sport. It's beautiful out here. A lot of you probably, that's a huge motivation as well as gaining fitness uh, to be able to explore beautiful places on foot. This natural form of running on trails uh, and the camaraderie as well of the community. But at this stage of my career, again, I train to be competitive. So, you know, tomorrow I got a serious structured workout at a telly ride. No goofing around, no lollygagging, no filming, no looking at the views. It's all business, but at least I get to enjoy these beautiful places. And it's been made possible by the generosity of the running community, people like you watching on here, Patreon supporters, uh, my sponsors, title sponsor, Hoko Naone. Okay, that's enough sponsor plugs. Let's get to the screw field. Don't worry, Sage, I'll take it easy on you today so you can take your workout tomorrow. Yeah, take it easy on me today. Got a big workout tomorrow. This is hard enough. Still adjusting to the altitude, but you know, 20 days out from Pikes Peak, still have some time to at least get used to the adaptations of being up high here. Again, we're sleeping at over 10,000 feet. We're sleeping at 10,400 feet. Put that in meters. We're running up over 12,000 feet right now. We'll get up to over 14,000 feet if we summit Mount Wilson. So spending a lot of time camping up high, living up high, running and training up high on beautiful trails. Life is good. 
I'm very, very lucky and very, very fortunate. Don't take this for granted. Let's get to that screw field. I see you, Marmot. Don't think we don't see you, Mr. Marmot. How's it going? How's it going, buddy? You keep it real up here. Keep it real. Plump Marmot. It's a lot of steep scree here. Hiking up a pretty high altitude. You can see uh, another 14er, El Diante. Diente. Not going up that. It's pretty rocky and steep, I think. Uh, so I gotta get more runnable stuff in before Pikes Peak for sure. And like I said, Condex of training, coming off of speed goat, I took a day off, had a seven and a half hour drive back to Colorado from Snowbird. Then uh, rode my bike for one day, just a 26 mile bike ride in the pouring down rain. Then uh, slowly worked back into it, got about 70 miles of running last week on uh, just those uh, five days of training, six days of training, uh, and a decent amount of climbing, but nothing too hard or intense. Recovered from speed goat pretty fast though, so I was pretty happy with that. And like I said last time I did, speed goat into the Pikes Peak Ascent Double. I only had three weeks between races. That being said, I was only doing the Ascent back in 2014. Uh, or is this, this time I have four weeks. So hoping to get a little more acclimated uh, and use that strength and speed. I've been doing these shorter mountain races, well, 50K and below, shorter mountain races on my home turf against some really stacked competition since it's part of the Golden Trail series. Uh, there'll be some guys from Europe, international guys, all sorts of good stuff. So, it's context of training. Let's get to the top of this mountain. Whew. Pretty slow going on this final thousand feet of vertical here. Hard to find the trail in the rocks, big rocks, loose rocks. Yeah, I generally, uh, I don't consider myself a mountain climber really, or a mountain athlete. I'm a mountain runner with an emphasis on the runner part. Uh, so generally I do like mountains where it's more runnable and you could run up the trail more of the way and not have to use your hands and arms. Or the worst thing is worrying about falling and dying off a cliff or having a rock tumble down and hit you. Uh, this isn't too bad, this is below class two. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad, but Definitely slow going in a power hike grunt. Uh, so I gotta get back to the specific running and hill reps and speed uh, for Pikes Peak especially. But you know, I still consider myself a road runner as well. So being in the mountains and the high country, it's a different sport. It's a different sport. And I realize that I don't pretend to be a mountain athlete. And I, I really have no desire right now because I still am a road runner uh, and I like running. I like sky running, mountain running, not climbing necessarily. That being said, part of enjoying the mountains in the high country here and doing Colorado 14,000 foot peaks, 14ers, is uh, a lot of them you do have to climb. And some of them I probably will never do because there's cliffs involved and it's class over class three, uh, which I'm scared of heights. So. Uh, See what we have to encounter up here. One final push for the summit. Right, babe? Ooh, baby. Now we're climbing. One final push for the summit. Oh, don't kick a rock down on me. Some nice little gnar. Came up that scree field in the valley there. A little bit of a, a little bit of climbing ahead of us now. Again, I cringe. I have to use my weak upper body, my arms and hands. I've not worked out my arms for this. I'm not a climber. I do not like having to use the upper body strength. No good. How's it look up there, babe? Good line. Yeah. Poor 
worst thing is the loose rock. If someone could kick a rock and it comes avalanching down on you, hits you in the head, boom, kills you. Or you, uh, one of the, you dislodge one of these 300 pound rocks, boom, crushes your foot. Uh, or you just twist your ankle, break your ankle. There's a lot that could go wrong. You gotta respect the mountain. The mountain always wins. This is supposed to be like a class one, class two hike, so. You guess the class three? Oh, okay. I could climb, I just don't like exposure and loose rock. Because it makes things unpredictable. Then it's like you're not using your brain, your knowledge, your skill. You're just at the mercy of loose rock and freak of nature events and gravity and other people that could dislodge rocks on you. That's what I'm saying in my very limited mountain experience. The mountain always wins. If weather rolls in and it's bad, you don't want to be up here either, for obvious reasons. Have a pack, be prepared with gear, tell people where you're going. All right, let's get to the summit. It's finishing off the trough line here, hopefully. Came up this trough, pretty loose rock. I actually dislodged a pretty big one and it went tumbling. Uh, so lucky no, no one behind us. That's exactly what I did not want to do. Uh, it's a little, a little dicey. I will admit, we came up this, the chute here. And uh, yeah, it's just gotta be careful of loose falling rock. Uh, I don't even know where the summit is either. We shall see, one final push. You gotta try to figure out where the summit is. Bit of a pitch here, the final climb. Don't like using my hands. This bad boy away so they don't take a fall. I'm on that ridge line. I don't know, it's off to the right for sure. So, uh, I just did a pretty nasty up climb there. A little dicey. See sunshine back over there. I think one of those guys, back side of the mountain here. But the summit's up there. And there's no way I'm doing this ridgeline traverse on this kind of rock. I think we picked the wrong line because uh, that looks really dicey, cliffs on both sides. I think we should have come up more on the south side. Ah, not looking forward to down climbing this with all the loose rock. It's not worth it for safety. Got to know your limits as a, as a climber. I'm not a climber, I'm a mountain runner. Don't like using my hands. Got a grip. So you just down climb this horrible loose rock trough, several vertical hundred feet. Realized we were off in the wrong trough. Off trail, again off trail. Should have been on this side. This is the side you want to go up, folks, the more south side. I'm gonna build a car in here so people in the future know not to make the same mistake that we made and get cliffed out. Not a lot of good carn making material, but that's my little carn marker. This was the split we needed to take to go up south to the correct trough instead of that crazy cliff, loose rock scree thing we were scrambling up and down. We only lost about 200 vertical feet though. See, there's a carn. Someone built one there. I think I'll build another carn so people know to traverse over to this trough, which is much easier. As you can see, Sandy and I are not using our arms, we're not using our hands. There's actually kind of a trail. I think it'll lead us to the summit. I'm not all cliffed out. So this is great. Let's see if we make it now. One final push to the summit. Made the summit. So we came out of this trough, which is much better. Totally cliffed out on the left there. Oh, it's not too bad. I thought it was a fatal fall. I was over down there initially on the trough and I didn't want to traverse this ridge line because I was too nervous about the cliff. The exposure, you know exposure. I don't like exposure. Oh, there's a cliff. Actually, you, I take that back. You would die if you fell off, off that. Uh, sunshine there. Yeah, super nice. 
have a little snack, put a jacket on, head down. All right, so that's a wrap for this video, but thanks so much for following along. Again, really appreciate all the Patreon support for making this possible. Uh, there'll be more tutorials, training talks, stuff you guys like to hear about, workout stuff, training stuff, uh, my own journey and vlogs leading into Pikes Peak here. Uh, hopefully the audio is good on this. But yeah, I really can't thank you enough for your support and for following along. Hope your running is going well. Any surface, any distance, whether you're running 5K, 10K on the roads, or doing mountain ultras or crazy stuff, mountain climbing. Um, hope you get something out of this channel, if not some entertainment value. But uh, really hope your in athletic endeavors are going well. Again, check out our website, uh, sagerunning.com. We have some training plans as well as uh, subscribe on here for more of these types of videos. Thanks again, guys. Really appreciate it.